This is something I like about visual scripting. You can see in left to right the flow of all your variables and functions to achieve the result that you're looking for in real time. So for this video, we're gonna produce this uh, level timer. It fires right when the level starts and counts. Uh, in this particular instance, it's counting minutes and seconds. Uh, the seconds are gonna cut off at 59, so it doesn't go over, obviously, that 60 second mark, and then the minutes are gonna tick up once we hit 60 seconds there. It'll, we'll do this for every level using only visual scripting, which again, I like because of this left to right flow. If you're a person who likes that top down flow for C sharp, that's okay too, but for me, I prefer to use visual scripting using Bolt. Here we go. The first thing I want to go over is actually how to set up Bolt. So you do download it from the Unity Asset Store, and then you install it using uh, the window, and then from window you go to Package Manager. And then in Package Manager, it's going to fetch all of your downloaded assets from the Asset Store. So from the Package Manager, we can see that we've got Bolt. It's already been imported and installed, but this is all you need to do. It is going to ask you during the install if you want to use human language or computer language. Uh, the option there is up to you. I chose computer language because I do want it to be as close to C-sharp as I can. Before we get into the graph, let's look at the elements that I've made for the UI ahead of time. Um, this is just a simple panel that I made and I resized to a shape that I thought would be decent for now. I may get another graphic or an image to use as the background. And then I set up the the lap time as a text object, and I just set the default text to 0000. I resized it, I colored it, and I just kind of played with all of the options until I got it to a place where I liked it. It doesn't have to be perfect, it could even be in the, the top of your screen somewhere, it doesn't much matter. Again, the exercise for me here is just to pass the variable from the flow graph to the screen at runtime as I play through the game. I was making a speedometer, but I did get stuck. And anytime that happens, I try and break the problem down into smaller parts. So the part I got stuck on with this speedometer action was passing the, the speed variable from the car object into the UI element. So anytime that happens, I just want to break it down a little bit. So now I decided to pause on the speedometer for just a minute and build out the lap timer because I know there's no dependent variable in a lap timer. Don't know if that makes sense, but I don't want to just give up on a thing. I, I like to figure out exactly what I'm missing. And so I spent some time building out the lap timer with the idea that once I get that done, uh, I'll know how to pass the variable back into the UI. So here we go with the lap timer. I made three variables in the graph variables tab. So I need seconds, timer output, and minutes, and they're all float uh, types. There's also an object variable called game timer of type text that references the lap time object I have up here in, in the panel. Now something I did when I made this uh, flow graph is that I, I embedded this flow graph instead of saved it as its, own, uh, as its own script. If you embed the flow graph into the object, it is tied to that object or embedded into that object. And so if you were to delete this lap time object from the, from the hierarchy, you also lose your flow graph. So just know that that could happen. Uh, it would be best to save them as, um, save them as uh, scripts in a folder somewhere really organized. Um, so back to the actually creating the, the timer. So once you have the lap time, I made a lap count and a lap, um, but the lap time object is just, let me go to the scene so we can see it. It's just this object right here. Um, and it's kind of offset like this just because I liked it that way better. Once it was in the game window, it kind of lined up nicely with the background panel that I made. There is a way to embed the timer into the panel, but I, I didn't do it that way. Again, I'm just practicing getting the seconds from the game time spit back into the UI. So I'm okay with how this looks for now. I know it doesn't look that bad in the game. So the first thing we want to do is if you right click anywhere in the graph, you can start typing in the unit that you want. And the unit that we use is delta time. So what we can do is get time dot delta. It's real simple, that's all this unit is. And then if you drag off the object pin into an add, you, you wanna add the delta time to your timer output variable. So you get this variable, you just drag it out from the side. You can see I'm just dragging it out. I'm gonna delete this one because I don't need it. 
uh, and then you just connect up the pins from A to B and then you use that combination to set the timer output so there may be a different way to do it but this is a, a different tutorial that I followed that seemed to work the way I wanted it to in the simplest way possible so that way I can set this variable and then also reference it later for a total time like if I want to save the lap time or something like that um, another pro tip for this is is always think ahead so as I do these uh, little sessions even even just for myself where I'm making the level timer I know that I may want to have that level timer stored as like a high score or fastest time something like that so so keeping that in mind I did want to have a different variable for the overall timer output then we'll go into another function here which is a math F floor to int function I may change this to milliseconds but what this uh, what this unit does is it converts the float basically into an integer with a floor of one and I'm leaving it this way because I may want to change it to add milliseconds down the road we're then going to come off of the set variable timer output into a set variable for seconds uh, and it's real simple you just connect up those nodes and then off that set variable we want to come off with the object into a modulo node and this basically sets the number of seconds to be a maximum of 60 so it's going to count 1 to 60 1 to 60 1 to 60 hopefully that makes sense for everyone um, but it will the seconds will reset basically after after it hits 59 this game timer variable could be moved down the graph somewhere so you see it's here um, it's just here because it was you could move it if you wanted to to a place that makes more sense in your in your flow graph uh, mine was just there from an earlier iteration of, of the graph as I was working on it. Um, and then you want to go ahead and get that variable for timer output. You could use a new unit or you could grab it from, from back here as well. Um, it, either way, it's the same. We're getting the, the timer output and we're going to convert minutes this time. So you can see we're going to set the minutes. The zoom function is kind of silly sometimes, but that's okay. We're going to set the minutes according to what the timer output actually is. So you could use the same timer output node and plug it into minutes and seconds, depending on how you want to organize the flow graph. That's really all that we're seeing. Um, because it's minutes, we want to divide the game time by 60. Um, you could divide one of two ways. You could divide A and B, or you could divide by, I think it's like a scalar is what it's called, and you could just plug the number 60 into the B unit there. But for me, it was easier just to pull a float off and divide by A to B. We're again using the same math to math f math function floor to int, so we want to make sure that we can't have a fraction of a minute. Obviously, it's the seconds counter, and then we plug that into the the minutes unit. Real simple. Uh, it's not a minutes unit. This is our variable for minutes. So now we're setting the units. And the difference here, if you if you pull off from your variables window into the graph window, it's going to get that variable. So we don't want to get it. I believe if you hold Alt, let me just try this. Yeah, if you hold the Alt key while dragging your variable out from the variables window, it will set that variable instead. So it's a handy little shortcut. And then what we want to do is get the game timer, plug it into the text option for this text set node, take the executable pin from the set variable for minutes unit and drag that into the, the last execution here for the set text unit. And then we're going to use this uh, string format unit right here. This string format is just string format. And it's going to ask for a certain number of arguments. We have two arguments, one for minutes, one for seconds, and that's what we want to pass through. So it's just this arg0, arg1 option. That's all we need to do. You probably could come in off this node where we set the minutes here and then drag it down, but for me, I liked having the the second option where I could just plug in the minutes as it was set. Um, this is probably not necessary, but that's okay with me. And then we want to come in for our seconds off the modulo unit that we have, making sure our seconds don't go past 60, and plug that into arg1, so that way minutes appear before seconds. Now here's the kicker with this string format. It has to be formatted this way. I'm not sure why. I don't know why having this say 01 is is gonna make it work versus double zero so I had this double zero colon double zero and it, it didn't fire but having it 01 
makes it work. So I'm not sure if it's one of the functions I have uh, downstream in the flow graph. Either way, I'm not trying to make this perfect. I just need it to work and it now it works. And that's the visual script we have for this game timer. So now that I'm very confident in how to plug a variable into the game window, my next step is gonna be fixing this speedometer so that way it works just the way I want it to.